Shalom Yisrael, Shalom Yasha Allah. My name is Yowetz Aim, Yahweh Aitza Aim, Council of the People. And this is a video that I'm doing for friends, family, people who may know me, who might want to understand why I choose to identify myself as a Hebrew Israelite, which is our true nationality according to the Bible. So in the first video, I showed you that there was people during slavery times like Denmark Vesey who identified themselves as Israelites, slaves who worshipped in secret huts that they called praise houses where they compared themselves to the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible, speaking in reference to the slavery we was going through here, showing you that blacks who are of slave descent claiming to be Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible is not a new age idea, it's not a new thought. That is something that's been going on since the slavery times. So now in this lesson, I'm going to show you that slavery itself was prophesied according to the Bible. And it was very detailed in the Bible, even to the point it explained how we was going to be brought over here to the Americas and cargo slave ships. So we're going to go through these scriptures, line upon line, precept upon precept, and we're going to gain understanding. The first scripture I'm going to go to is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what we got to understand about the scripture right here is that Egypt, according to the Bible, means house of bondage. Bondage is slavery. So in other words, according to the Bible, Egypt means house of slavery. I'm going to prove this to you with other scriptures. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So right here, the scripture called Egypt, the house of bondage. Bondage means slavery. We're going to get more scriptures validating this. Exodus chapter 13, verse 14. And it shall be when thy son acts of thee in time to come, saying, What is this? That thou shalt say unto him by strength of hand. The Lord brought us out from Egypt from the house of bondage. Once more again, the second time, we got a scripture calling Egypt the house of bondage. We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6 I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage we're going to go to another scripture in the Apocrypha 2nd Ezra chapter 1 verse 7 2nd Ezra chapter 1 verse 7 am not I even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsels. So the Lord is saying that he took the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. This is that movie, Ten Commandments, when Moses split the Red Sea. That was the first time the Israelites was in Egypt. The Lord said when he brought them out of Egypt, he brought them out of what? The house of bondage, calling Egypt the house of slavery. That's what bondage means. So let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, and let's read the scripture again with more understanding. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, which is the house of bondage, again with ships. So now this scripture is saying that he brought us or he's going to bring us into Egypt, which is the house of bondage. So he's going to bring us into slavery again, but this time he's going to bring us with ships. How did we come into slavery here in America with cargo slave ships being packed like sardines? Many of our people died on a voyage just coming from West Africa alone to the Americas, all right, in those same cargo slave ships. But the Bible don't stop there. The Bible gets very detailed. It says, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. So the Lord is showing you that this is a sign. This is not going to happen any other way. The way that I'm telling you this prophecy is going to happen is going to happen exactly like that. This ain't going to be the Holocaust. 
This ain't gonna be no slavery where people is transported in trains, cars, planes, or any other vehicle. It's going to happen in ships, cargo slave ships. The Bible is so pacific that it even named the tribes and people that sold us into slavery from the west coast of Africa. The book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 3. They have cast lots for my people. Now the Bible is prophesizing that they were going to cast lots for us. The Most High's people. The children of Israel. All right, Casting lots is us being auctioned off. One nigga, two nigga, three nigga, sold. And have given a boy for an harlot. So when they sold us, they sold us for prostitutes. And they sold our children to be prostitutes. Like in slavery, they would take the, the strongest young male and then force him to rape a young black woman to produce a better slave. All right. This is how they used to breed us, breed us like dogs. All right. And sold a girl for wine. So now the native people of Africa, they sold our women for wine. All right. You go into history and tell you they sold us for wine and musket guns that they might drink. So it says that they might drink so they could get drunk. So now we're going to confirm this with history. This is a book written by Joseph J. Williams. It's called Hebrewism in West Africa. In that terrible trade, the protected tribes of the coast were the prime boat brokers. So the protected tribes were the native Africans that were selling us. All right, they were the prime brokers, meaning they were making a lot of money off of selling us. They brought from the black interior kingdoms of Dahomey and Ashanti. So these were the two tribes that they purchased us from. All right, the Dahomey tribe and the Ashanti tribe. And they sold to the white merchant traders of Europe. Slaves, rum and gunpowder were the chief items. So slaves were being sold and they were being sold for rum and gunpowder. Okay. The gunpowder went to the interior. The rum was drunk on the coast. The slaves or those who survived among them went to America. This would indicate, first of all, that the Kuramanti, so the Kuramanti is a particular tribe in the Ashanti who were Hebrew Israelites observing Israelite customs, which you will learn that in another class in a different video. This would indicate, first of all, that the Kuramanti was not a native of the coast. And secondly, directly indicates the Ashanti as the source of supply. So now the Bible, the Bible and history links up perfectly. All right. This historian is letting you know that we were sold for wine, wine and gunpowder and for prostitutes. And we just read in the book of Joel, chapter three, verse three, that they auctioned us off, casting lots for us and sold the boy for a harlot and the girl for wine. So let's skip down to verse four to find out who specifically sold us? Jo Joel chapter 3 verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zaidan? So when you look these two names up, these are ancient African nations. And all the coasts of Palestine. And originally the Africans lived in the land of Canaan, which is now called Israel, before the Israelites were born. They were called the Philistines, which is a name that translated later on to Palestinians. But now in today's time, who live in Palestine? So-called Arab people. All right. So now I was letting you know, Africans and Arabs. He's saying, what do ye have to do with me? And it says, will ye render a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own Head. So the Lord is letting that letting the Arabs and the Africans know that there's no way you could pay him back for auctioning off the children of Israel. We're going to skip down to verse six. Let's find out who the Africans and the Arabs sold the children of Israel to. The children also of Judah. So Judah is you so-called blacks. 
and the children of Jerusalem. So the children of Jerusalem and Judah is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. There's three tribes out of the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm going to read. I'm going to start from the top. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. So who are the Grecians? The Grecians are the Greeks. The Greeks are a so-called white people. All right. That ye might remove them far from their border. So it's letting you know that Tyre and Zidon and the Palestinians, they were responsible for selling the so-called black man into slavery to the so-called white man. So when they sold us into slavery, what did they do? On the East Coast, they sold us into Middle Eastern parts, all right? On the West Coast, they sold us into what you call the triangle slave trade. This is how what you call today the African diaspora was done. So let's see what the Bible have to say about the so-called African diaspora. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 5, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. So it's letting you know who they're talking about. I have said it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. So the Most High set us in the midst of all of the nations. We're scattered through the diaspora amongst all people. No matter where you go, you could go to Brazil and see the largest population of blacks that descend from the slave trade there. You could come here to the North Americas, you could go to Spain, anywhere in the world, you'll see so-called black people that are descendants from the diaspora. Verse 12, a third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And the third part shall fall by the sword round about thee so the third part of the nation of israel is talking about the three tribes that were going to be sold into slavery and i will scatter a third part into all the winds and i will draw out the sword after them so the lord said he was going to scatter these three tribes the third part of israel into all winds meaning all around the world and he was going to send a sword upon them and that's a curse the curses of deuteronomy which was set upon us as a sign deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64 and the lord shall scatter thee among all people so the lord said he was going to scatter us amongst all people how he was going to do it from the one end of the earth even unto the other so the lord was going to scatter us from one end of the earth even unto the other how was this done through the triangle slave trade which was prophesied according to the bible and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone that's why in the first um, video I showed you, when that first generation of slaves died out, what did they do? Impose false Christianity on us, which have us brainwashed to this day. So, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, to gain more understanding now that we know these things. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships so into the house of bondage again with ships by the way whereof i spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again so it's talking about our homeland as a nation on a whole we were not going to see our homeland again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men that's bond men slave men and bond women and no man shall buy you so it says as slave men and slave women we were going to be sold and it says no man shall buy you meaning what it's going to take more than a marcus garvey to get us out of this it's going to take more than a martin luther king to get us out of this it's going to take yashua hamashiach yahweh shah to get us out of this who we ignorantly call as jesus christ He's the true savior. He's the one that's going to bring us out of this captivity. So now reading these prophecies, it make you wonder, wow, the Bible was so detailed in these, in these events, but we were told 
that Africans went through this. We were told that this was called the African diaspora. Who was these scriptures talking to? Or who was these scriptures talking about? Let's read the next verse, which is chapter 29, verse 1. And it reads, These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So these words was being spoken to the children of Israel. It didn't call you African. It didn't call you black. It called you the children of Israel. So if these events happen to the Israelites, why were Israelites on the west coast of Africa? How did they get there? Well, I'm going to go back to another book written by Rudolf R. Windsor from Babylon to Timbuktu. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son, Titus put an end to the Jewish state. So when the Romans took over Jerusalem, this was only a few years after Jesus Christ. All right. They tried to put an end to the so-called Jewish state with great slaughter. So they did it with great slaughter. They killed a lot of our people during the period of the military governors of Palestine. Many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. So everybody who didn't leave Jerusalem or took heed to the warning that Jesus Christ told them to do, to leave Israel, they were the ones that was being slaughtered and atrocities was being done to them. During the period from Pompeii to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. So Jews fled into Africa to hide amongst people that look like them. All right. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. So I tell you that the slave markets was full of what? Black Jewish slaves. So thus far you learned that the Bible prophesied that you was going to go into slavery through cargo slave ships. It even told you that Africans and Arabs were going to be the ones responsible to selling you for selling you to the so-called white man who the Bible called Grecians. All right. And not only that, but it prophesied that we was going to be scattered amongst the earth, the four corners of the earth through this slavery that we was going to go through. All right. So this is the prophecy. These are the prophecies that help identify us as the nation of Israel to the Bible. And as you can see, the Bible is the true book to prophesy these events before it ever occur. So I hope that you gain understanding. The next video that I'm going to do is going to be a video called Hebrewisms of West Africa, showing you the different tribes of different people calling themselves African who was observing Israelite customs and some of them even identifying themselves as Israelites before slavery. So you can understand that we knew we were Israelites before slavery, but it was prophesied because of our wickedness of serving the other gods and wanting to follow after the pagan traditions of the nations surrounding us that we was going to be brought here into captivity. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you gain much understanding. Shalom. Son of me, I think I can get to know you. Son of me, help me out. to grow.